So we are here in Zanklin Research Lab. Basically, the TB, one of the TB reference labs in Nigeria, in Nasarawa. Okay, so we are going to have a demonstration done with our two samples. The essence of this is for us to kind of have a unified way of doing this in country. Remember, it's difficult for us to use putin samples for TB diagnosis in children because most often than not, we don't tend to get quality sputum from them. So we are falling back to what is giving us results, which is two samples. So we are here to demonstrate. We are also here to learn. So our instructor will take it off from here to demonstrate how to use two samples for this. So Peter, go back to you. Thank you very much. And full comments. First of all, by Having this sample, uh, we are going to use our standard operation procedure. It will be our guidance. So I will start. By labeling these sputum samples, we have five samples. So these samples are going to be labeled with the corresponding buttons because we are meant to collect um, about one gram of the samples into the empty container. So I will label the first one, number one sample. And then looking at this sample, you will know that this sample is in liquid form. So because of consistency, we will not um, collect a part of it. We are going to process directly from this container. So this is the second sample, which I will give number two. And because the sample is solid, we will collect one gram of process. So I will label the corresponding container two. Processing from the first sample, and we will look at our SOP. And the SOP says to take a piece size of these two samples, about one gram, into a sample container. So, this is the first sample. So, this sample is in liquid form. So, what we will do, we will skip the first procedure. And we come to the second sample, which is in solid form. So we we'll collect one gram of this sample to the corresponding container. If you take a part of it and you notice that it's not up to one gram, you can go back and make it up to that quantity. So we are done with the second sample. So this is about one gram. Okay, so um, the sample collection we have finished. But meanwhile, I want to call your attention to the wash bottle. Uh, this is like uh, the, the, the contamination bottle. Uh, whenever you are collecting sample and transferring to a cleaner container, you need to have this and you make sure that the container contains um, either vaseline or lysol. Okay, so this will help you to decontaminate the um, uh, to reduce aerosols and contamination of the environment. 
Okay? So what we are going to move into the second step of this sample processing. Um, number two, SOP says, mix with solid solution and allow some time for stool to dissolve if well formed or hard. So we are going to introduce the normal saline to these samples we have already cotton. And the way we are going to go is to use our pasture pipette to introduce the normal saline into the sample. So I'll start with the first sample. And I've already weighed this sample and I've already looked at it and I've discovered that it's about 2 mils. So I'm going to add additional 2 mils to create a slurry of the sample. As you watch me, you can see I did not allow the pastor pipette to touch on the mouth of this container to avoid contamination. So, I will go. so um, I've used one method of introduction of normal saline into the uh, samples. Alternatively, we can quantify. Now, looking at this sample, we know that this sample is about one gram. So, we can estimate two mils where we uh partial prepared may not be available so you can watch me and see how i will estimate two meals of the normal saline so i am adding this without allowing the container to touch the sample bottom okay then by the time you finish addition of the normal saline if you discover that the sample could not form a slurry, you can call back and add additional volume of the saline into the uh, sample to create a good slurry. So with this second step from the SOP, we will now move to the third point, which is shape intermittently to emissify and create liquid So I'll move to the second sample, and the second sample, if you look at it very well, you'll see that these two samples are by the, the, the side of the uh, sample container. So I'm going to shake it and make sure that the whole sample mixed with the uh, saline solution. So, I will show you these two samples. When you look at them, you will see that a good liquid slurry has been formed. Okay, so we will allow it to stand for 15 minutes. Okay, so we are done with the 15 minutes, the incubation uh, of the samples. So we are going to start off with the fifth step in the SOP. And the fifth step says we have to add the sample reagent and the volume is 3 is to 1. Meaning you will add 3 mL of the reagent to 1 volume of the sample. So may looking at this sample, this is 2 mL. So the three volume of the sample reagent that will go into the sample is six mils. So the total content of this sample reagent is eight mil. So I'm going to quantify to add six mils of the sample reagent into the sample. And I'm adding it very carefully by the side of the container. So 
So I'm done with the addition of the sample reagent. So I'm going to shake and allow it to stand for 15 minutes. And the essence of allowing this to stand for 15 minutes is to allow for the aerosols to get settled. So, we are done with the shaking and it's going to stand for 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes, we we'll move to the sixth step. And we are done with that 15 minutes. So, we are going to now go into filtration of these samples to get a clear fluid that will be used for the analysis. So I'm going to fold the filter papers and get them ready for filtration. So we have five samples and we have five containers. So these containers, we are going to label them according to the samples we have and I will label this number one label this container number two label the other container number three to number five So I'm starting with sample number one. Um, the reason for filtration is to separate samples with high debris from a clear sample. Because while you're processing, I will admit um, two samples with debris. If you don't filter it, is going to um, affect the process because this is a PCR process. So for clear samples like this, you may bypass the process of filtration and use your pasture pipette to pick a clear fluid. So we are done with the filtration. So this is um, what we got after the filtration. So the next stage is to label our cartridge. I will have five samples now we started and these are five cartridges. So I will label this number one. This is cartridge for sample number two. For sample number three. For sample number four. And the last sample for number five. So, I will introduce two mils of the sample into the cartridge. So, I will pick two mils of sample number one so right now we have collected our sample inside of the cartridge so we are going to move to the genius plant lab and complete the process all right so we are done with the hands-on and now we are the uh, genius part room where the samples will be analyzed. So I am starting off with the um, sample analysis. With sample number one, and I'm going to scan the cartridge. The cartridge is scanned, 
and the system has given me the option to enter the patient ID. So the cartridge, the expert system has allocated a, cut, uh, a module, module number two for me to slot in this cartridge. Okay. So this is the, uh, the second module where the uh, gene expert system has allocated for us to inside the sample. So the first sample is running. 